Welcome back. This is the second building um, tips and tricks video that I'm going to do. Um, we're going to talk about shocks today. Um, but before I do that, click subscribe. Um, and if you like the video, like it. And after the video, comment. Please comment. Let me know what you'd like to see more from the videos. I want to find out where I'm missing information for everyone that's interested in how to build these lovely things for the car. So this is shocks. There's loads of other parts in the cars that we can talk about. I've already built the front of these shocks on the car. Um, I'm now going to build the rears. I'm using the Kashima shock bodies. That's the main upgrade that I'm using for these. They're a bit more slippery. They allow the oil to slide up and down the bore a bit easier. So you find that the shocks feel smoother when you go around the track, which is great. The only other thing that I'm doing differently to kit is I'm using a two hole piston. And with the two hole piston, I've drilled them out to 2.1 um, millimeters. Uh, with my drill, um, what you'll find is um, you pick up the hole, you run your drill through. I've already pre-drilled these because I thought for the sake of the video, you don't want to see me drilling away and various things. Um, but that's what you need to be doing for if you're running on um, AstroTurf, um, bumpy tracks and low grip. Um, but if you're on carpet, you're going to want to be on like a three hole 1.6 um, uh, setup with the uh, rounded black piston. Um, so get that on, enjoy it, put 400 CST oil in it. I'm going to be putting 450 in with this because this is going to be for AstroTurf. If it gets really cold, I'll drop it down to 400 on the back. Um, and that'll be coupled with a green spring. Okay, so let's go into it. Um, one of the most important parts of these shocks is that they don't leak. Um, obviously, they land jumps and go over bumps really well, and that things don't fall off them when you use them. So we'll quickly go through that, but we won't rush it. There's no point rushing it. I've got a screw here. Um, the, the really important thing about your parts, anything that's going to screw together that you're going to apply Loctite to, um, you need to be adding... Um, some cleaning to this process um, so you can use some we've got some bearing blaster I'll put this in a pot normally I'll spray some in I'll drop my parts in I'll let them I just well just clean up in there um, there's nothing worse than having the oil in there and that will stop the um, Loctite uh, helping fuse all these bits together um, it's very important that it doesn't come undone during the run um, we all know the frustration of when it comes undone is generally your best run so let's avoid that um, but I've already cleaned these these are already looking good I've actually assembled them once already um, and then the video kind of went wrong so I had to do them again um, so they're all clean and I'm going to drop some um, Loctite on so this is the core stuff that we um, supply with the kits you could use a green one and you could use a red one the red ones are extra um, hard to get undone once they're together uh, and you run the risk of uh, stripping the head or losing the um, screw within the assembly of what you're doing. Um, so do that with care and don't use too much. With the blue, you can be a bit more overzealous and you won't have really any trouble. I've never had any trouble with it. So I'll pop that inside the piston now with the recess um, at the same part as the screw sticking out, as you can see on the camera. Hopefully you can see on the camera if it's focused in. I think it's focused in. We're having a little look at it from time to time. Make sure the uh, camera focuses in. I've just got a new one. It's a Sony A6400. I don't really know how to use it, but it's better than the old one and it works really well. Um, that's the main thing. Um, next up, I'm going to screw the screw into the shaft. And we're going to go all the way until it stops. And that's going to pop through. I'm not going to wipe any excess off just yet because I'm going to tighten that, make sure it's good, and then we give a little clean. Um, you can use shock pliers when you do things, or you can be very careful and use some snips. And you think, oh, not snips. You could use some flathead um, pliers. Let's use flathead pliers because we've got some flats on the end of the piston, and those flats are very, very useful because um, you can hold on to them without pinching into the diameter that you want to be sliding on the o-rings so i'll come along i'll grab hold of these i've got that and i'm going to screw it to touch Ooh, i'm slipping on here so i'm actually going to use my snips i'm not happy with this um i have got some shock pliers but i'm not going to use them because not everyone has shock pliers so you're going to see that i've been using these and i use them most of the time to the horror of some people um but the shock shafts seem to be fine and you don't have to clamp onto it just hold on to it like a spanner does. Anyway, so I've knit this up to it's reasonably tight. 
I've done up to that point there, you think it's come to a stop and it's snugged up and I'm going to give it one quarter turn. It's a acetal, it was squishing, there'll be lots of pressure on that head now holding it in place. So I'll give it a 90 degree turn and that's in there, good now. That's not going to come undone. Um, I haven't had them kind of come and done yet. Um, yet I have had some people that have, uh, people within the hobby uh, will say to me, my uh, screws come out, you need to be using this type of screw or it should be done this way or that way. And it's like, well, we've had a bit of practice at it and we're keeping an eye on what the, uh, the hobbyists are doing and the drivers are telling me. And, um, and we can always improve the process later on if we work out that we need to be on a green Loctite instead and that might be the ticket. But the important thing now is that you let it dry. You'll notice that in the kit when you build it, or maybe you didn't notice because you ripped the bag open so excitedly that you didn't see the key information that says that it takes 20 minutes for it to cure. Um, well, not to cure, just for it to fix. And then on the bottle it says, usable cure strength in three hours. Right, normally we build a shock in about three minutes at the track, throw the bits together, whack it in. It's like putting Loctite back in the bottle. It's gonna stay wet. You can't imagine it to dry very easy. If you actually give it a chance to dry, start get these bits done, leave it the three hours. Uh, like, you know, then if it comes undone, then you can start complaining. But if you've built them in about one minute, kind of it's your own fault in a certain degree. So unless you're gonna use red Loctite, but again, these all these Loctites take time to cure. So we've done that now. I'm gonna put the one that I've done now to the side. And the one that I prepared earlier, a bit of a blue Peter one here, um, is ready to go into the shock. So the um, next step is to build up the seal housing. In the seal housing, we have two airings. We have a bush for that goes in between the two airings. And we have a top bush, which is a little top hat thing. Um, and then I'll have an O-ring that will go around the top of the body. Um, and then um, we'll have a cap that goes on. And we're going to use some O-ring grease. I've got some MR33 O-ring grease that we're going to use. Um, and that will just keep things lubricated, keep it nice, keep it just the best that it can be, really. Um, we don't want to ever offer um, anything the chance to kind of bind, drag, scrape and damage O-rings and stuff like that. So I'm going to get a little bit of this Loctite. Loctite? It's not Loctite, is it? I'm just talking too fast. The o-ring grease and i just pop it inside the body where the o-rings are going to sit and just kind of like to spread it around just like putting marmite on toast unless you like it thick so don't go for that um that's on there let's say margarine or a bit of butter some people like to spread that thick too i'm going to pop my o-ring in now simply going to drop it in the top let's look at my camera it's looking good i, I think i think things are in focus that's in there it's looking good and then I'm going to drop that down there. For those watching this video, you've probably built loads of shocks. You're like, why am I even watching this video? I've done this loads of times. Well, then this video isn't for you, is it? This is for someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. They're new to the hobby or they've been doing it for a while and they might have missed something. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you can tell me what to do. I don't mind learning new things. That's about um, what we're doing in life all the time. We we want to learn things. Um, now I have the little bush sitting on the top. There's a white bush looking pretty in there that's going to support the o-rings let them do their job i'm just going to pop some of this um o-ring grease in there it's just sitting there it's not going to let anything drag on itself or catch and i'm going to pop that in there so that's now they're happy and then i'm just going to put a last little bit in the top and wiggle it in the hole just to make sure everything's lubricated up all nicely one thing that we need to make sure we, we never forget to put on is the o-ring that stops the seal housing fall off that goes on there very nicely. Thank you very much. And then we have our top hats. Um, it's a nice little piece of machined acetal. No mouldings on these parts. They're all machined high precision parts. Um, and the beauty is that everything goes together properly. With the moulding you get um, a deformation across the sides and things. And they, they aren't perfect. Um, no moulding will ever, well I can't say that no moulding will ever be perfect. But um, a lot of the time mouldings have got things that aren't great with them. Whereas a machined part. It's going to be nice. I then put my seal pack housing on and I'm going to give it a spin and it's just touching onto that o-ring and I'm going to turn it until it touches the piece of um, shock body so it's fine so we just turn it and that squeezes on nicely that's not going to come off that's going to be really good it'll come off with your own means but not whilst you're driving the car and that's the most important thing I've had it in the past on um, 
many cars over the years where if that bit's come loose or come off, your oil's going all over your wishbone, the track, and racers aren't happy when your oil, well, oil from your shocks goes all over the track. Um, there's been many an occasion uh, which um, tracks suddenly lose a bit of lap time due to this. Anyway, so that's on there. So we're happy. We'll put away. No, we're going to keep our O-ring grease out for now because we want to put the collar on. Here's our collar. Very nice looking thing. Nice and shiny. Um, and we're going to put the O-ring inside it. And that will just stop it from spinning randomly. So that's the whole reason why that's in there. Again, this is more for beginners than kind of uh, the guys that have been doing this for a while. But if you're watching, uh, you experienced racers out there, and you've spotted something that I should probably add, just let me know. Because anyone's going to read the comments and they're going to see that. So that's popped on there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a little bit of um, the O-ring grease on the O-ring. Because when I put it on the body, it means that there'll be no frictional drag um, from the uh, nitrile o-ring um, and it means that it will just going to slide on nicely and it will just stay nice um, so that goes on there and all I do now is I push that up to meet the threads I actually go backwards until it pops on see it just popped on there um, well you might not have seen it but if I do that again come back off I push it on that's the o-ring over I give it a twist and then it will just pop up once it finds the thread. I'm going to get there. We, there we go. Just give a little click there. And then I start turning it the normal way and it's met the thread. I won't be doing any cross threading. And I do that a lot of the time when I assemble things. Just go and find the first thread instead of just starting to crank on this, um, screwing something in. Because um, you'll end up cross threading. And cross threading is when you've got two threads. It's not great when you've got two. We prefer to have one generally. And so I'll screw that up to a position that I'm happy to. And now that's looking great. So we're happy with that. I'm going to take a swig. It's just Diet Coke. No, uh, uh, no additives in here. Just uh, friends that know me know that I like a bit of uh, something else in my drink from time to time. Anyway, we have our piston and shock shaft there assembled nicely. The Loctite is cured. I did these this morning i started doing a bit of filming but i wasn't happy with what i did um so i actually went to a model engineering show which i'll be doing a video for well i see how good it looks i might end up not putting it up um but we'll now pop that in place that goes through and you'll have a bit of grease on the end but you don't want that all over your fingers we want to keep our fingers clean you might end up getting offered a biscuit or something and then we're like oh i've got me greasy fingers so uh keep your fingers clean just in case of biscuits it's quite an important thing of life um, I'm sure there's other things that you can also eat. Right, so that's now there. It's all good. It's all a bit dry, so you can hear things. But we've got the um, the silicon grease, not silicon grease. We've got the O-ring grease on there, and that will be looking after it. Put that out of the way, and our shock body is ready to have the next stage. And what is the next stage? For me, I'll be screwing the shock bottom on. Um, not the shock bottom, but the ball cup. Ball cup's very important. And look after your ball cups. You might use them so much that they become elongated, they're a bit bigger, and then they pop off, and then you complain because your ball cups are popping off. These are actually low-cost items. You can get these in a pack of eight, I believe, um, and they will last you for such a long time, and the play on your car will be reduced. It'll be great. So now I'm going to screw it in. Um, and I'll go and meet it as you would. You could put a bit of grease on the thread to start it, but this should be all right. Again, I'm going to use these lovely snips. I'm going to find the flats on the shock shaft that's now holding that. It's looking good. And then I'm just going to twist. We do supply a tool in the kit that allows you to hold on to here and you can spin it around. But I've got strong thumbs and fingers and I'm more than happy to do that. You've also got an eyelet hole in there as well. So we can post our driver through if we really want to, and we give it a spin till we get to where we want to do. But I'm actually gonna come up and leave some threads in there because I'm going to have the shock length as 28.5 millimeters, measured from the bottom of here to the seal housing. And I'll show you on here, um, I'll have a reverse um, reading here for you on the screen. But I'm coming here and I'm currently at, where am I? Got shaky hands, 28.59. So that's not far off. Um, I'm just going to give it a slight tighten. I'll use this to help me. It's actually a, a 0.5 thread. So if you go one whole turn, it goes 0.5. So we just have to turn a tiny bit to make it a little bit tighter. And we give it a little measure. Here we go. Come across here. 
come in there. So I'm 28.47. Um, I would argue that 28.47 is good, but for the camera's sake, I'll come and just show you again, just to reiterate um, what we need to be doing. It depends where you measure it. You might get a different reading. I'm getting, I'm doing this left-handed and trying to hold it straight. But we could argue that we need to make it a little bit longer. So maybe I was wrong. I'll measure it with my other hand in a second. But you can see what we're up to anyway. So I'll just go and check it again. But this is important. If you run it with a bit more droop, I think that's fine. It's 28.45 when I measure it that way. Um, a little bit more droop, and it just helps on jump landings and various things like that. We generally live with that on carpet, clay, astro, just that setting. On the front, uh, the kit is 23.2 or something like that. Um, but on carpet, we go down to 20.2. We're actually shorting it off quite a lot. Um, and you can do that by putting a shim in there and then setting what you want. Um, but that will generally keep um, the wishbones a bit flatter going around these hardcore and keeps the car flatter. So you can really lean on that front end. So that's now together. Now we're going to do the really fun part. We're going to put some more oil in and make it really messy. Um, and we're going to let the bubbles come to the top. And we're going to try and get that on camera. Hopefully we can see all these lovely bubbles that happen. Um, so I've got 450. That's my flavour for this one. And I'm just going to pour that in until it gets to the top because we've still got some um, areas to displace, which has got um, where this um, shock shaft, shaft well, can't even talk, sorry, the, the shock shaft sticking out. So as we poke that in, it's creating a cavity underneath, which has got air in it. And as we pull it up, it's going to create all these lovely bubbles. And I'm going to make a mess in this process as well. So as we went up, I've got a bit on my finger. So I'll give that a wipe off there. But as you can see, there's some nice bubbles in there. And I've also got some oil on the side. So we try and keep this clean. Um, it's never an easy process. I see many people make a right mess of this. And sometimes I'm equally guilty of it. But that's going to sit there and let all the bubbles come up to the top. You could always go up and down again just to make sure you've got that covered. But that's gone down to the bottom now. And I'm going to let that settle. Make sure my fingers are clean as well. Got my uh, kitchen roll, the beloved kitchen roll. That always helps um, be sure that I'm clean with that. Um, and also to have some like uh, baby wipes to hand so you can give things a good clean and a bit of moisture to wipe it off. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're rubbing silicon grease into your fingers. And I'm not into any form of chemistry or biology, but um, I don't believe that silicon oil rubbed into your fingers is probably a good thing. Um, also avoid drinking it, um, inhaling it or anything like that. Just generally, if you put it in an old Coke bottle, Make sure you write oil on the bottle and yeah, I've, I've swigged it in the past when I've had it mixed with a tiny bit of drink. Um, and I know many other people that have done it and um, you will be watching those who have experienced that you've all tasted shock oil and it's not pleasant. It's a bit slippery. Anyway, we need to do the shock cap now. The shock cap is very important because it keeps the oil in the top. Obviously, it's very easy for me to say these things, but people forget the importance of making sure things are tight. Check on the quality of the moulding. This is the moulding that um, we supply here. Um, if I grab some, my little knife, um, check for any flashing on the edges. So there, there's minimal flashing there, that's fine. If the flashing, which is from the mould line, is tall or anything like that, the oil will work its way out. That's, that's not good. It's going to be terrible if we do things like that. Um, so this all looks good. I've already made my hole in here. Um, I use a reamer, but you can use a drill. But I poke the reamer um, through this surface make sure you're careful um, if you're with an adult get them to do it because um, you might end up poking it through your thumb and then you're going to complain to me it's easier to do it with a drill if you don't have the experience of using reamers and good at poking holes and things and you can come in from the kind of more desirable end of poking it in there drill it through and you're good so that's there um, I'm then going to I'm actually going to screw this in place now um, I have my 1.5mm driver. Make sure your tip's good. As I've talked about previously, the 1.5mm tip is um, a tip that you probably don't replace too often. You will replace your 2mm tip more often. And I'll get people stripping the 1.5mm tips, as I said in the last video. So the tip is to replace your tips. Um, this is an MIP tool. They tend to find um, they last longer than most other tools. I've had this driver for some time. I've got some random O-rings squeezed on there. Very impressed with the quality of their tips. And I'll screw that down here. 
until it meets the end there. Don't overdo it, don't strip the plastic. It's not going to help you with the whole keeping the oil in. Then pop the plastic top in the collar. Then put the O-ring in and with your little finger now, poke it in there. And that's looking good to me. You want to keep that in there. The O-ring is, is very important. That does a lot of the sealing. And then what I do is um, I put a little bit of oil in the cap until it meets um, the edges of the uh, the O-ring. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. looks good to me. Um, and then I put a little drop more in the shock body. Yeah, that looks all right to me too. I hold both of them. I bring up the shock body. And all I do is I flip the cap on top of there. All the oil stays inside for now. So that's currently in there. Um, there will come a point that it wants to start coming out of the top here. Um, and it will. you can push down on the top and that can allow some of it to come out if you want. But we're going to try not to be messy on this one. I'm going to put the um, stand out of the way. And all I'll do is I'll hold on to this body. And I'm going to tighten it up. Hopefully we can see this in the video. It's very quite hard to try and get these things in the video. But you can see there's a bit of oil coming out the top. It's bubbling out. And I'm tightening it up. Give it a little clean as you're doing it. Don't let oil go everywhere. But for the sake of the um, me doing it without getting oil everywhere, I'm going to wrap the tissue around it. And I'm just going to tighten it up till it gets in there. And what's probably happened is you've got um, a hydraulically locked shock absorber now. Um, or, or you've got a massive amount of rebound. So we're going to push it in there. I can't push it any further. That's the limit there. That's um, So have got maximum rebound and it's locked. And that's because there's more oil in there than you can help. And you've got to put, um, you've got to, well, with the volume, you've got to displace um, the oil somehow and you can't. And that's where these little bubbles come in when we build shocks. And we've got to introduce the bubbles in a bit, um, but they get done through the O-rings at the bottom. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screw out and this is the bleed screw if you know anything about big cars You've got to bleed brakes and stuff like that. And so you have to make sure the system um, Where you have the brake um, from the servo to the caliper are all in line so the oil um, will, will move um, With it in the in the right place um, if you've got air in there also that's going to cause some trouble You're going to get a spongy brake. That's not so fun is it? So now I have the screw off there um, and you're going to see oil coming out of here. Okay, so I, for the sake of the camera, I'm going to make a mess and I'm going to squidge it up and you're going to watch it all pour out all over the, um, the shock collar all the way to the point that I've got the shock pushed all the way in. And that's as far as it's going to go. And that should be enough to do the job. What I'll do is I'll give it a little extra wipe quickly. And we're just going to give it a second. There's no extra bubbles are going to come out with this and we'll be fine. Okay. And then I'm going to put my shock screw back in. My bleed screw, that is, not my shock screw. We'll call it the bleed screw. Let's give it a good terminology. Screw that down there as it goes on. It's looking good to me. I'm going to meet the bottom. Don't overdo it. Again, it's not fun when oil goes everywhere. You will find that when you run this type of two-piece shock cap, you will get little bits of oil seeping out of the two-piece. But that's normally because you've landed some big jumps and it allows for the um, O-ring to squish and it comes out. And I've got a small bit of theory. It's not me trying to feed you a wild story. Um, but I'm just giving this a pump. I do this quite a few times just to make, because this happens on the track. So we just replicate that now and just make sure it's going to be good. Um, that when you land, and this can compress a little bit, it's like running the solid plastic caps. It can compress, it can take into account when you've jumped a bit too hard. Um, and so when the um, you've gone to so much pack that now it's going to load up um, and it, possibly the car's going to handle badly, that's one extra thing that can move. Then you've got the S2 shock towers, they can then flex a little bit, and any, any other plastic bits around it can flex. And this just makes the cars handle a bit easier. Um, so that's like that now. I'm happy with that. I'm now going. I've pushed it in. It's not coming back out. Oh, a little bit. Okay, so that's not really coming out. So we're happy. But if it was coming out and we get a tiny bit more there, that's because it's got too much air in it. And we're just going to unscrew this bleed screw. Out it comes. Push it a little bit more. Fine bubbles come out. Give a last little wipe, and that would be called. A double bleed so if i'd be like have you double bled it if you know there's it happens to be an issue 
Also, if you travel abroad and you fly on the aeroplane, due to the pressures and stuff, um, we find that the shocks change and build up with a bit of air pressure inside them. So we end up um, just rebuilding them if we've travelled, or just rebleeding them, make sure they're good. But now I'm happy with that. It looks great to me. And that is the shock. It's looking good, but what you can do is give it a little blast, blast with the airing, a bearing blaster. Or if you've got an airline, you can do it. But what that's going to do is put the uh, uh, silicon oil everywhere, and that's not very fun, is it? So that's all wiped up. There's no oil on that anymore. So when you touch it or you let someone else touch it, there's not going to be any issues. So that's your shock. Then we have our spring. We want to put the um, heat shrink on it. So again, put your heat shrink on your springs. Don't assume that that paint's definitely going to stay on there. It's got a tradition to uh, work its way off. And then we spin it round, um, and then that's on there. And then I use a lighter. These wonderful things, they create flame and havoc and fire. Um, be careful with it if you're young. Get adult supervision or get a heat gun. Um, and all we do is we shrink the heat shrink on. So that's that. It's all good, didn't even get that hot, so it's fine. I pop that over the end of the shock. We then get a spring cup. Pop that on. Oh. I'm messing around here. Right, that's on there. That gets wedged in, and it's good. I tend to rebuild the shocks every kind of four to five meetings, depending on the surface. If it's really clean, you don't have to do it as much. But also the oil um, generally stays good. Um, but if you're at some dusty tracks, it can take a beating and you get fine oil um, or dust work its way through the O-rings, which is where the air also works its way in. It sucks it in from that end. Um, but anyway, that works nicely. It's looking good. I'm happy with that. Can't wait to get it on the car. Okay, if you've enjoyed that, like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Click like if you liked it. If you disliked it, maybe just let me know. You don't have to click on the dislike button. But if you do dislike it, be honest. You know, let me know in the comments if there's something that you'd like to see more of. Um, the other thing is um, just have a go. Do these things. Rebuild your shocks more and more than you think you should. Um, a lot of you leave them for a very long time and wonder why your car doesn't handle as well as it used to. No matter what brand of car you drive, you're placing your O-rings from time to time and your oil is a big thing. And check the conditions are uh, condition of the shafts. The shafts can get scratched up. They can we um, wear off that outer lining that's on it. And that's not good. Uh, we need to keep these things nice. Check for dents. Um, replace the caps if they've elongated their holes. Make it so it all fits nicely. And replace the bottom um, ball cup from time to time. And that'll be good. Make sure if you've stripped the thread, replace the top. Um, don't give yourself any form of like second class racing. Make it really good quality for yourself. So that's that. I hope you've enjoyed. See you next time.